what is that? Like, what is it? I don't even understand what that is, but somehow it's like maybe a little familiar. I believe in imagination and I guess that's sort of the root of experimentation for me. And I, and I think I believe in that moment when I see things that I've like never seen before, where it's like, it, it stops me in my tracks and there's a kind of awe and inspiration that happens. So both my parents are artists. So growing up, it was like always art, except for my poor sister, who is incredible and is now a therapist, which I feel like totally makes sense. And I have some like very distinct memories though, like of asking my mom to draw pictures for me that were in my head. And I'd be like describing them to her when I was really little, like maybe like three and she would like try and draw them and I would look at them and just start crying because they didn't look like how I saw them. My parents also one year for a birthday set up an artist like studio in our basement. I still like sprawled. I think they were trying to contain me. As you can see, I have this huge space and, I, and it's very clean right now, but it, I am a mess, like a tornado. And so, and I take over any space I come into. So I turn the dining room into an art studio and like, so I think they tried to contain me in the basement, but it didn't work. I have a painting back there from, it's as big as all of these from when I was 15. My dad helped me stretch it because it was so big and I was, of course, wanted to make a giant painting. Um, wonderfully, we had nude models for this painting class that I had. Um, in high school and it got censored. Wait, like it was up on display in my high school and then it had to be taken down because it's a naked lady. I've always loved photography as a medium, but I always hated photorealism as like a form of <laughs> painting. And Guaranteed, I've hated things before, and one of my favorite things is when I hate something, when I come around like three years later and I'm like, that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Or like, so I love that kind of ability to change. And so then I worked from a photograph and made this charcoal drawing. And it was like this combination, uh, and it was very, uh, came very naturally to me. And I had a combination feeling of, oh, this is kind of magical and I feel a lot of shame. I did photography and I have a huge love for uh, uh, certain photographers have very, very much influenced me. Uh, Francesca Woodman, um, Anna Mandietta, Rolf Eugene Meatyard. So I think about them a lot and I think a lot about performance art and photography and documentation. So then I started making videos and I did a lot of video work and then also doing a lot of green screen editing um, and doing like crazy montages and collages. And then when I came back to painting after that, I felt like the paintings were, I was thinking about, basically if I think about painting as painting, I get really lost. And so I have to think about painting, assembling a painting like it's a collage. Um, and so I think about video art. I think about editing videos when I'm making paintings. 
so they're all very much like staged performances with costumes and props. And that was sort of how the photorealism came back into the paintings. really am addicted to discovery. I like problem solving. And I also like when something completely baffling shows up. Um, and I also like things that are impossible, but I tend to go into things with like, I'm like, oh yeah, that'll be great. And then it's quite challenging. Like I was really into going on adventures. I like biked across the country with a friend of mine, Kazoo, doing dance performances and laundromats. And I don't know, like it was pre-smartphone. We were just like cycling, <laughs> doing these very wild sh impromptu shows in, in these laundromats across the country. And we met amazing people and saw things I've never seen before. Right now I'm focusing on a piece at the Bowdoin Museum for a show there, which um, is a painting by Plantermo. And I think it was painted in 1513. And just a little background on it, it's in a frame right now, but originally it was commissioned by the Medicis to go on the side of a carriage during a carnival. And there were several panels depicting this myth and it was to parade through the streets of Florence at night by torchlight with chanting. So it was like basically a, like almost like a first animation, especially the way the painting's painted, which is to make it look like it's the illusion of being a stone sculpture. So that's what inspired this painting over here, which is this sleigh ride where I'm painting the Pontermo painting. <laughs> but they're often very absurd in terms of like the narration, like very dreamlike. I mean, my nightlife, my, by nightlife, my dream life is so crazy that it rivals my, it makes my day look like so mundane. So there, I feel like it's just like all this one flow of uh, wild imagery. I think a lot of the, or a, thing, a theme I keep returning to, I was thinking about both in the videos and in the paintings is this idea of like escape and escaping from some type of confining situation or obstacles or uh, death even and transforming and coming, how do you transform to get out of that situation? It's like you're in a room, there's a magic portal. <laughs> and magical creatures, I'm like, why wouldn't there be? It just seems so, I believe, I fully believe in fantasy. will tell you what to do. There'll be some impulse. And to trust, it's sort of like a trusting 
relationship. At different points, there will be like a, a vision for something. And then maybe I'll sit with it for a while. Be like, no. Because if you go in to do, it's like funny. Like I feel like if I go in to do one thing, like no, I'll just, it's just like dominoes. <laughs> but I also think I work best in like triage mode. Like I'm just like, okay. Um, and with the, because I pour a lot of paint. It's like, who knows? Those things are so shifty. Uh, yeah, but how do you tell if something's done if you don't? I've, I don't know. I've had paintings where I'm like, it's done. And then three months later, I change it. So I guess what happens is that I think something is done. And then if I keep working on it, it apparently it wasn't done. And then if it sits for long enough without being worked on, then it's done. And recently, being in this space, which is the first time I've had my own space, and feeling like there's a longevity to that, I feel a sense of coming to the studio to nurture something, which I don't know if I felt before as much. There's a real feeling of like coming to check in with everybody, um, you know, and see what kind of care needs to happen. If I stay away for like too many days, I really start to feel crazy. Like my, I feel like it's uh, also what happens in the studio is a certain drainage. I've never thought about it this way before, but like where I feel like if I'm looking forward to come into the studio, I'm looking forward to like whoo, release. But there's also a lot, that being said, there's like a lot of like anxiety and terror in making, I feel like, that I deal with every day also. <laughs> which, which we were saying earlier is like what I also love about it. Like I love things that are both terrifying and exhilarating. So that is something I do look for. But then there's also just like um, demons too, I feel like I battle. The demon called doubt. Like the voice that's like, this is terrible. This is a waste of time. Oh, that's my other demon. Is t a time, like you're a time waster de demon. There's this quote by Philip Guston that I love, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, but it was something along the lines of when he had started doing his cartoon paintings and a curator came in to see them and was like, oh my God, what have you done? Like, these are awful. And he was like, you're upset? I have to come in here every day and see them. Like, you don't get to be upset, I'm upset. <laughs> and I just loved that resilience and like, and that it also doesn't come down to liking something necessarily. This is what's been interesting. I've been thinking about this a lot recently about like figuring, I don't know what I think of my work some, you know, sometimes. It's quite, it's just like something that comes out and I make it. And so, and maybe I hate it or maybe I love it, but maybe I like it, maybe I don't like it. So I feel like with this, I'm just kind of amazed that he just, he, or the way I think about it is that there, it didn't come to, it doesn't matter what or, whether or not he likes his own work or not at that moment, that there was some kind of like, just need to do it. And that I think is really amazing. Mm -hmm.